Good afternoon, everyone. This is a little article, maybe some of you have read, maybe some of you have not, about the genetic testing done on elongated skulls, which they find in different spots. But these are in uh, Paracas. And it's a question and answer interview. You can come and you can read some things. Cranial deformation was done in certain cultures, as we know, uh, to make human skulls look like that. But, um, you know, the question has always been, how come? Why, why they want their skulls to look like that? And the thought of that would be they're emulating something else that has skulls like that. And, uh, you know, L.A. Marzulli has done quite a bit of good work tracing down these sites and, uh, you know, they don't have the same kind of plating in the skull as the human. It's quite interesting. So you can come and read this article, which is describing the testing that they have found. And according to the testing so far what it's shown is uh, it's leading that it's not human and you can come down here the most people really want to know is what was found in that initial result and what is being said is segments of the DNA of the Paracas skulls don't match anything in the in the gen bank. That's the database that contains all known genetic DNA information. Now there's segments that don't have any there's nothing there that matches. So there is more work to be done that can be done to completely verify this but from what I've gathered on this article and any other thing that I might have found is uh, they're not done testing I mean there's still more to do like I said but what they have right now tested is it's looking like these things are not of this world they are not human they do not fit into the idea of of which I totally disagree with a Darwinism evolution if if that if you're going by that they don't even fit into the tree of that and then we go down and yes exactly the fact that it doesn't match anything in the gen bank could be just one it could be a mutation that hasn't been seen and just unique particular race of people maybe it could be but the whole study is so new and they're you know Paracas very mysterious people nobody studied a lot of them it says um, yes what is the opinion of the findings the theory that is being developed is that they're a mix of different types of people And then we go into the Nazca people, occupied the same area, at the Paracas. They could have wiped the Paracas out. The elongated skulls disappear in that area about 2,000 years ago, with the arrival about the same time of the Nazca. So you say a different mix of people. Now the thing on everyone's mind is, are these schools alien? Or are they extraterrestrial? And you say a different mix. Do you think there's a possibility that a race of beings arrived and bred with the humans? What is your view on that? And they are open to the idea. But they don't want to go too far in that direction because they've only had an initial result. But due to the geneticists, 
the fact that geneticists found segments that do not correspond with anything, it is doubtful they are a separate breed of humanity. Doubtful. Because where would they have come from? The strange thing is the predominant aspect of these skulls amongst the royal family is very, very odd. The future sampling and results will reinforce or dismiss this result we already have. They're looking at something intriguing and they're not going to dismiss the idea of off-planet intervention. And Lloyd Pye, you know, Star Child Skull and stuff like that, he's pretty convinced you know that they are not human beings and I'm gonna I'm gonna agree and uh, talking about Pi anything to carry forward the research he was doing and several months before his death he passed the Star Child Skull and info to a group of people because he knew he was ill and he didn't know if he'd recover. And so they're trying to raise funds. And they've done a lot of gene genetic analysis, as you can see on Lloyd Pye's website. A lot of money and effort spent on the chart the Star Child Skull. But there's only one of them, but there's a lot of these Paraka skulls. I'm sorry Pi didn't get to be here to see all these results that are going to come out. A lot of skepticism. They want concrete results and absolute proof. You have to have money to do this testing though. And they're talking about fundraising to try and raise the funds. And how, once all this is all done, proof or not, of off-planet skulls from those beings or on-planet, it does help to, uh, like I say, unravel the history of the past. The ancient past. The hidden past. The past they don't want to talk about. Now I'm telling you, I do not believe that the human skull can have the multiple plates within it that it has but yet you're gonna have other skulls that are found and Marzulli has had cast made of the real deal that he was able to see and they don't have it and it shouldn't be that way Well, you can come here and read for yourself. But does that look human to you? Of course not. Well, you can go back into the ancient Egyptians. You know, different headdresses they wear, and everybody always said, well, that's just uh, something they wore on their head, you know. Maybe. Probably not. Then we're going to switch gears over here, and in the upper left-hand corner, you can yeah, get some stuff going here with everybody. That's three sixes, people, and you have to know that if you've ever been to the CERN website, or somebody's shown you before in a video, or whatever. It's quite obvious, you know. You have to... Symbolism is quite eye-opening when you start to realize the amount of things that we see on a daily basis that seem normal to us. And when you have people that understand these symbols and can trace them back and they, they actually show you what they represent 
you can kind of figure out some things. So we have here a notification, I believe it came out in December, that Israel is joining up with the crowd at CERN. Er, that's what they said. And a resolution unanimously adopted in the 169th session of the CERN Council admitting Israel as the 21st member state. It will be effective from the date on which Israel formally notifies UNESCO. I've talked about them before. And. The Israeli scientific community has brought a great deal to CERN over the years, looking forward to working with them, intensifying their collaboration. Israel is proud to become a full member of CERN. I'm disappointed to hear that. Flagship of European scientific research. Look forward to contributing for the benefit of science development and education. Very special moment for Israel science in Israel. Their formal association with CERN began in 1991. The Atlas Experiment, they are involved with that. As well as the Alpha and Compass Experiment. They, follow, they have decided by council in 2010 to enlarge the CERN membership. Serbia, 2012, Cyprus and Ukraine will become associate members as soon as their national parliaments ratify this. Slovenia regarding membership, Brazil, Pakistan, Russia, Turkey, all applied for associate membership. Romania has the status of candidate for ascension. Whoa. It is quite distressing, all the people jumping on the CERN bandwagon. To me it is. I mean, if you use something for good, that's one thing, and it has good things that it could be used for if they would do it. But you know how it goes. Once they find something, they always weaponize it. I think I've mentioned that before. If they could understand what holds everything together and why everything doesn't just fly apart. If they can understand the glue, so to speak, of why things stay together, then they can understand how to take things apart, how to make things come apart. And that is the worrisome part because that would be the, to me, that would be the weaponization of it. So that's something to think about. And then you mix in some uh, Freemasonry, some Kabbalism, magic, and you got a real recipe for the people that run the world to have even more power, the power of CERN. Pray for the world, all the people, even the non-creator God believers, because there's always a chance they can turn themselves around and get out of what they're into and get into where they should be, which is the one truth. Lord, Savior, that we all need. There is something on the other side for the non-believers. Let's hope you don't find out too late. God bless you all. I'll speak to you soon.